Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee, weather in five, five days and five minutes. Brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware, your superstore for salt, sand, pebelado, mag, ice, pellets, and flakes, and everything you need to get you through this winter for storm cleanup. New snow blowers, perhaps. Uh, you've got, uh, of course, uh, windshield washer fluid for your car there, including Rain-X. Salt uh, spreaders, snow, uh, we show you the snow blowers, the mag ice pellets and pl flakes and Peladel, and of course, rock salt, the lowest prices for rock salt anywhere in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, tri-state area and beyond. So head over to Omni 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, New York, 6317561125 is the phone number and the website is omnitruevalue.com. So we've got a cold day, we've had some sunshine, some clouds, and we even have some snow showers as we've got uh, uh, the wind coming in off the lakes and a little bit of an upper air disturbance. So you can see them here on the radar, uh, some bands there across uh, New Jersey, uh, central New Jersey, southern New Jersey as of 1.30 Eastern time, and also some patches of lake effect snows going on in uh, upstate New York, up along I-81 down near Binghamton uh, into central Pennsylvania. Uh, western New York, and we're seeing them also coming off Lake Ontario in eastern New York. They're all moving to the southeast. Uh, we've got an area of snow in the north, in the Great Lakes, and that is warmer air that's actually trying to push eastward. And we've got some more activity on up in parts of Montana uh, with some uh, snow going on there. So we're going to move things along here as we go through this week with the next round of changes. And we're going to start off uh, we're going to use the NAM model first because we are going to see warmer air come in on Wednesday on west to southwest winds. And we'll have sunshine and probably some afternoon arriving high clouds. You'll notice to the west some moisture beginning to build. And that's uh, the ahead of an Arctic front that is moving eastward. And in this particular situation, the front is going to come through and all the models are showing this in some form or another. So normally, you know, we get these cold fronts to come on through. They produce a few showers ahead of it, uh, and then they're done, and then we clear out behind it. Well, uh, this time around, it's uh, different because we have a very cold Arctic air mass behind this front uh, with north-northeast winds setting up, or even northeast winds, bringing down very cold air almost be immediately behind it. And at the same time, uh, we have actually a southwest flow aloft. So as a result, we're getting a little bit of overrunning here, and it's hard to see, but there's actually just a little bit of a ripple here, just like a very small little wave of low pressure, just enough to kind of, you know, give a little kink there to the atmosphere, and you wind up with snow behind the front. And it's the sort of thing where you could see a coating, you could see maybe up to a few inches in some places, and that's kind of where my mindset is with this. And then uh, uh, in some instances, uh, if you get a little concentration of precip, somebody winds up with a surprise of three or maybe four inches. I don't know if that's going to happen, but it is that type of situation. And uh, the, the NAM model usually uh, operates the best in this uh, in this type of a setup. Now, this is at one o'clock in the afternoon on Monday. So you see where the northern edge of that snow is, which runs down to, to the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area on the south side through Philadelphia, New York City, uh, and then northeastward up to Boston. Uh, so by uh, four o'clock in the afternoon, it's just about all done, except for uh, southeastern New England there out on the Cape. Now, I'll widen out because now we have to look at what's going to happen to the south. Uh, and cold air comes in for Thursday and for Friday and sets us up going into the weekend. The front really doesn't push that far south. That first wave just kind of nudges it a little east, but it stays stall stalled off the North Carolina coast back down into the Gulf of Mexico. And you see there's moisture there. We're continuing uh, here on Friday with this northeast wind or north-northeast wind, uh, cold air, temperatures probably not going to be much out of the 20s or even the low to mid-20s on Friday. And then here comes the next wave, which the dam shows this area of bulging precip in Virginia, uh, down into uh, southern Delaware, the southern part of the Delmarva Peninsula, ice in the eastern Carolinas, both north and most of South Carolina under ice, northeast Georgia, snow and ice there for uh, Friday. And we're going to watch this wave as it moves northeastward. 
Uh, this is what the uh, European model, uh, just as uh, just as one model that's really been very bullish on this. Uh, but the European model, and I'll bring up the latest one here. Uh, can't show you the precip on the map, but we can at least show you where the surface features are. So uh, over the last couple of days, it's been uh, taking a low and turning it into a rather vigorous storm system. On today's run, it's much further south and east, and it kind of matches up better now with what the GFS has been telling us. Uh, I wouldn't completely discount this, that it can't be wind up being further north, but it's more lined up with what the, uh, the, the other models are saying, which means that precipitate snow stays uh, mostly out of our area uh, for uh, uh, fr uh, Friday night and Saturday, and instead, uh, you wind up seeing it down uh, in the southern part of Del the Delmarva Peninsula, uh, central and southern Virginia into North Carolina. And there could be heavy snows here for parts of southeastern Virginia and into northeastern North Carolina, even down at the coast. That's how this is setting up. And as far as the longer term is concerned, uh, I'll uh, move over to the GFS uh, I, and by the way, I just want to emphasize there's still some fluidity here. I mean, I, I'm not 100% uh, convinced of all of this and how it's going to play out. It, you know, it's hard to ignore. This is kind of like last week when you look at the models and you see three of them doing all of the same things and, and, and you're trying to, you know, some people are trying to find an argument against it. Uh, it's very hard to fight. But one thing to look for at the longer term, here's the GFS, by the way, for Thursday. It's lined up very well, almost the same as the NAM. Uh, the Friday wave, you see it there. It goes out underneath us. The Europeans kind of matched up pretty well with this. The GFS actually has a third wave, a third low that comes out. And this is where I'm not, I, I, I don't know if this is correct or not, uh, but this is where I, I've got some questions because you've got a trough that's dropping down uh, into the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, and it's trying to lift that low and deepen it as it moves on out to the northeast, southeast of Cape Cod. Here, the GFS is the only one that's doing this, and the other models don't have it. So, uh, unless it's uh, you know, unless the GFS is is right, uh, we're just going to go on in the idea that it's just going to turn very cold and very dry in it next week. Looks like we have an Alberta clipper of some kind Monday night and Tuesday ahead of a sh strong shot of Arctic air for the middle part of next week. So we're going to turn very cold into early next week. Then this potentially this arc this uh, Alberta clipper goes by with some snow with that, and then that goes out, and then it, the, the coldest air that we've probably seen all season comes down uh, into the eastern half of the United States and carries us through the middle part of next week. A lot of working parts here in terms of the upper air. I, I wouldn't, you know, I don't think, I, I wouldn't say this is all locked in stone. Uh, wouldn't shock me if we wind up still seeing some changes back and forth, but you know what? First things first, uh, is Thursday, and I just wanted to just show you, this was the Weather Service's first forecast map for snow amounts for Thursday, and, and it just came into its forecast range today. So when you, but usually the first forecast is just, you know, they, they put up, they throw up uh, minimal numbers, and then as the uh, day wears on and we uh, get the updates going into this evening, we probably will see these numbers, I think, nudged up higher. I think we probably could see, you know, a few places with a couple of twos in there and maybe even an odd spot or two with a three. I'm thinking a coating to a few inches possible for the weather system on uh, on Thursday morning. Weather in five is brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware, your, your hardware superstore for everything you need to get you through this winter. Uh, 631-756-1125 is the phone number. The uh, address is 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, New York, and the website, and by the way, easy access from the, the uh, Long Island Expressway, and the website is omnitruevalue.com. So enjoy the rest of this uh, chilly afternoon. The Joe and Joe Weather Show took a day off yesterday. It is back tonight at 7.30, and we'll go through everything uh, tonight as far as uh, how this is all going to transpire over the next uh, five to seven days. And we'll even take a look at the long range. So we hope to see you tonight at 7.30 Eastern.